Yes. If you have kids, chances are at some point you've had discipline problems. <laughs> Gee, you think? It's payback for when you were a kid. <laughs> and sometimes we're just clueless about how to handle those things. So today, and for many shows to come throughout the rest of this year, I'm going to be giving you guys a road map for navigating this rough terrain as we continue our Parenting 101 series. There is a science to this, and we're going to talk about how to do it and do it right. Well, today we're doing Parenting 101 follow-ups, because we live in the real world, and we make progress, but then other things come up. You manage these children. You don't cure them. Now, moms and dads may be the big guys in the house, but toddlers can really cut them down to size. And one of the most aggravating things to deal with is when your toddler throws a tantrum. Don't you just love it when they pull it in a restaurant or somewhere? Uh, my next guest, Terry, knows just what I'm talking about. Watch this. My name is Terry. I'm a stay-at-home mom of a three-year-old boy named Caden. He has horrible tantrums. His tantrums occur probably two or three times minimum a day. Always when his dad is at work. These uh, tantrums are just wearing my wife out. I mean, she's literally at her wit's end. I've tried timeouts. I've tried to reason. I've tried to literally walk out of the room. Sometimes I've even tried to bribe him with candy or something, that doesn't work. He knows I'm a pushover. So how long has that been going on? Oh, gosh, about a year, but it got worse. We just had a newborn baby. Uh -huh. She's about five months now, and it's been getting worse okay. since she came along. So you have to have some idea about where this is coming from so you can deal with the causal elements of it. Now, it, it increased when you had the baby. Yes. And there's been a division of attention. Yes. At that point. So yes. does it seem logical that this may be attention getting behavior? Yes. That, he, he's, that he's doing it to get your attention? Yes. Because he was an only child. Now all of a sudden, here's this little bundle of joy, and he starts throwing tantrums. Yes. Well, I can connect those dots. Yes. And that seems pretty obvious. Then when his dad's home, it doesn't happen as much, which could be one of two things. Either he doesn't think he can get away with it with his dad, mm -hmm. or there's now double people there to provide attention so he doesn't feel deprived quite as much. And it could be a combination of the two. So you need to think about those things. So in the prevention, it's possible that you may want to hear some of the things I was saying earlier about that special big boy kind of relationship with him and giving him the attention so he doesn't feel threatened by the little one coming on. But also today, we brought in one of my favorite guys. This is a pediatrician, Dr. Harvey Karp. And he deals with toddlers every day. And in fact, he's written a new book called The Happiest Toddler on the Block. And now, I I'm not sure that we agree on every aspect of this, uh, but he's here to talk about his approach to stopping tantrums. We sent Dr. Karp to Terry's house to witness her child's tantrums and to work a little of the Dr. Carp magic. Take a look. The first thing that I want you to understand about Caden is that in a lot of ways, he's like a little caveman. You know, cavemen would spit and scratch when they were angry, and they would pee anywhere they wanted to. You need to know how to speak his language. When I have to put him to bed for his nap, he goes crazy. Start out by letting him know you get his message first before you give your message. And you do it in a kind of a repetitive, primitive way, like you want, you want, you want, you want, you want. It's passionate. It's energetic. You want that cup. Yeah. Your cup. Yeah. Your cup. Yo, your cup. You got you it. Want that yeah. cup. I feel bad. like a moron. <laughs> you don't want to go to bed. You don't want to go to bed, but we're going to go to bed. It's time. I, I don't want it. If he still is upset about it, then you repeat it another few times. At that point, they give in. You don't want it. You don't want it. No, you don't want it. No.
Well, he wants a Spider-Man shirt. And he has one Spider-Man shirt. So many times it's in the laundry, it's dirty. He will fight me, he will scream. First it's, you want Spider-Man, 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 you want that now. You want Spider-Man shirt? Spider-Man shirt, Spider-Man shirt. Then you come in with your message, which is, we could wear this one. Look, we could wear this shirt. This one's a cool shirt. Okay, yay. That was easy. That was easy. You listen good. Lay on your pillow. Good job. Okay. Night night. It's a learning process. It's something that the more you do it, the better you'll get, and the better he'll understand what it is that you're doing. Yay! <laughs> now, um, Doc, your your number one thing here is to make the child know they've been heard, right? That's really important to you that, that right. they know that you're experiencing their message. Before you get to your message. Right. Yeah, whenever you talk to anybody who's upset, whether it's an adult or a kid, the most important thing is to let them know you get their message first before you take your turn. So if you say to your angry toddler, I know you want that, sweetheart, but it, you have to wait. It's not ready yet. <laughs> they didn't, it's like blah, blah, blah. Okay, and you, and you have some other key points in here. Number one, you, you think it's important that you, that, that you do mirror their energy. And we, in fact, we have your points. Let's, let's put them up. Repeat the child's phrases with high energy. Match mm -hmm. their energy, right? right? All right, and next, you say repeat them in the same order the child did. We're parents all the time saying, it's okay, sweetheart, or no, you can't go out. It's snowing outside. We get to our message without repeating back. You want to go, you want to go now. And we got to do that first before we get to our... Uh, short picture. phrases. Short phrases. Because you don't want to be getting some long diatribe of logic. And then tell me about the, the body language that you think is important, mirroring the body language. Well, most of our message comes from the nonverbal way we say, we present it, rather than the, than the words we say. The older they are, the less primitive they are, so you don't have to do it in quite a primitive way. The more upset a child is, they go down that evolutionary elevator and they become even more prehistoric and then you've got to be even more demonstrative with your language. Do you ever worry about giving the child undivided attention for bad behavior? No, because this is Because you've got just... a child throwing a tantrum here and right. all of a sudden he's got mom squared up, framed up, undivided attention. Well, you know something, they're under control. It's a behavior, like you say, this is a behavior that they're doing. First thing I want the child to know is I'm not against them. I love them. I see them. I understand what's going on. So I'm going to acknowledge what's going on in their language. Now, if the tantrum continues, I'm not going to be an audience there for a half hour. I'm going to let them know I love them. I join with them. And then I might say something like, you're so mad. You go ahead and cry. And I'm going to check you in a minute and see how you're doing. And, and this was effective with you for, Absolutely. for, the, for mm -hmm. the behavior. All right. Absolutely. And it spells it out in there in real action-oriented steps. I read it cover to cover. Great. Thanks. Next, 